fucked up and <laughs> they're really cool looking though. Yeah. It's funny, I've been so busy I haven't had a chance to like experiment with any cooking or doing a lot of it lately and this house that we just bought, you know, last year, first time I've had like a gas range in years. It's always been that electric garbage. So I'm just like and I don't get a chance to cook. It's like, fuck. <laughs> now that I have the equipment. Alright. <clears throat> so now we got pretty much like the really tight lines up here. And we'll start to fade it out a little bit down here. And, uh, and make it look like we're more kind of seeing underneath the water. Ramen's ramen's good, man. Ramen. I mean, if it's just like the little noodle pack ramen, I mean, ramen. There's a whole culture around ramen, so you can cook ramen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Remember to put an egg in it. Then it's gourmet ramen. <laughs> That's when I first started out. 18 years old, traveling around, broke as shit. If I could afford an egg to put in my ramen noodles, that, that was a gourmet meal. And if I could get to like a Wendy's or a McDonald's and steal salt and pepper packs to season it up, woo! Ciao, Bella. <laughs> that was even crazier. over here it's zoom. there's a really big a bigger wave hiding off in the distance there this ramen lab in Boca Raton old Japanese woman makes the broth early morning when it runs out no more ramen it's amazing that sounds incredible Hell yeah. I've been to, uh, there's a pizza place in Oregon like that. They make, they make a certain amount of dough. In fact, Bourdain went here, uh, went there once on his show. I think that's how the people I was with found it. But, um, yeah, they make a certain amount of dough. And when it's done, it's done. And then there's a place in Berkeley that they make one type of pizza a day. And that's all they make that day. You get one choice. And it's, you know, obviously it's some crazy concoction, but it's fucking amazing. <laughs> that ramen sounds insane. No soup for you. Broth ran out. There we go. Line work in there. So you can see I'm starting to space it out a little bit more, a little less of this noodling right here. And then, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. And then, uh, since we're talking about ramen, do I, do I have to explain the joke? <laughs> okay. can do a little bit more and there. There we go. Woo! Mm, I finally got the last of that cold. My voice still kind of goes in and hops between me and Tom Waits a little bit, but Glad I don't feel as shitty as I did like the night I started sketching this. Oh man, that was awful. Like right after I got off the stream, I tried to go sit down and rest, and it was just like nothing was comfortable. 
slept on the couch, tried to watch a movie. Finally, I was like, fuck it. 3.30 a.m., drove to Safeway to get NyQuil. I don't like pharmaceuticals, but I'm like, I need something. I need the good shit. <laughs> I need NyQuil ramen. it's balanced for me right now and then we'll worry about detail work and whatnot but as long as there's no nothing is weighted too much in one direction or the other but yeah I'll do that all the time I'll step back especially when I'm painting in a nightclub because I'm like really close to the canvas and then I'll just like push back and okay get away from me I need to look at my art <laughs> and uh check it out Always, always good to step back. Like I said, it, you know, as, as stepping back is the most important part in making sure it's it's weighted right, it's balanced. I mean, that's something you really can't look at close up. Be right back. I'm gonna make some ramen. There you go. <clears throat> Nagasama is hungry. <laughs> Make enough for everyone, or you don't, or don't come back. <laughs> I'm kidding. <of> <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of times that's why I do these lines, the bigger lines, to kind of show where these waves come in. And it also gives me like uh, points that I hit where I'm like, okay, uh, I know like kind of right around there is when I need to start spacing these out a little more. Um, so if I am working a lot closer or whatnot and not stepping back, then, uh, um, then yeah, I can still kind of help keep that little cheat to be able to help keep the balance of if I don't get to step back as much as I'd like. Like with streaming when I'm pretty close to it, you know, close to the painting here, so. Not too salty. <laughs> Throw an egg in it. <laughs> and no, I don't hide writing or letters. I've had people ask that. Do you, is that your name in there? Is that the secret to life? Yeah, no, that's one thing of it, you know, that, that definitely is, is not learned, you know, per se through a teacher. It's, you know, um, just knowing how to balance things, and and it was it was kind of weird. It, it was something that I, I I remember happening almost like there was a point in my drawings or my sketch. A lot of it had to do with just doing black and white comic book art back in the day because it it was just black and white. So there was you know the weight of everything had a lot more impact on one you know uh, one section or another if you had too much black or whatnot. Sometimes a little bit of color can, you know, color is a whole different animal when it comes to balance. So, but um, yeah, when I was doing black and white comic work, I remember like consciously paying attention to it. But 
at the same time, I would do pieces that just kind of, I'd draw it because it felt right. And then when I looked at it, I'd be like, oh, like that works. And I'm like, maybe this is that second nature shit that people talk about. So it was funny. I do remember a period in my life where, you know, like actually thinking about balance. And it becoming second nature, I think, kind of met each other and shook hands. Because, I mean, I, I, like, once I left high school, I mean, I, I really just screwed the pooch on remembering, like, rules. <laughs> you know, like lighting and, like, all that, you know, I used to, uh, even now, I usually light pretty universally. Um, or I've always tended to light from the, uh, uh, the right because I'm right-handed and it's easier to just shade from the left and go that way. Um, but there are times, you know, I mean, I've done murals and I've done, you know, commissions where I've actually had to like, you know, oh, it's a mining camp and they're underground and you know, there's lanterns. So, I, okay, I have to, you know, remember the lighting. Because a lot of it, you know, just, just by doing a lot of live art, that it was more about, like, the passion and, and getting the painting on the on the board and making sure the characters look cool. And and it may have been a good painting, but it might not have been as, as technically proficient as it should have been or technically, um, you know, on point. Yeah, balance is, a, balance is in the eye, for sure. Like, you know, like good photography, you got to know how that, you got to be able to balance like with your eye through that, you know, through the viewfinder, or whatever they call that thing, the view master, <laughs> you know, not everybody's got that. That's why most people, when they take a good picture, it's a complete shock to them. Like, oh, that's such a great photo. It's not because it's a good photo. It's because, holy shit, did I take that? <laughs> Because uh, I was just aiming at mom and dad in front of the tree and the pumpkin patch or whatever, you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I can see it when I take a picture, I always try and like, can I frame this up? You know, can I, what, what do I want on the edge, you know, or what do I want out of frame? But I mean, just real basic shit, just to make sure the paint, you know, it doesn't, or the picture doesn't look like complete garbage, but yeah, I don't have that, you know, all my good pictures are just like, well, I'm glad that happened. <laughs> Like a whale. Looks like he's in water. We're in the right direction. My god, I've already splashed paint all over my umbrella lighting. <laughs> oh no, I'm safe from the splashes. It's like three feet away and it still has like paint all over it. Um, how long have I been streaming? Two hours, 18 minutes? I feel this is going along a lot faster than I thought it would be. Yeah. And part of it was just kind of getting into the rhythm of how I wanted to do the water. And 
Because I was kind of fucking around up here. I was like, eh, do I want to do it that way? Do I want to, you know, a little, little experimentation going on there. I think Sugar may have passed out. I don't know. All his gear is still on. Unless he is just like full on head deep in that ice cream. My wife went to Greece with a girlfriend and asked me for one thing to make better photos. I explained rule of thirds. She came back with amazed how easy and how much better her photos were. Some basic concepts go. They do. Um, you are correct. Uh, like I said, once I started like paying attention to some basic stuff like you know, how to paint eyeballs or, you know, like remembering some of the basics for, um, I guess that wouldn't be a very basic rule, but when I started paying attention, <laughs> uh, certain things changed in my artwork for the better and, and um, a lot of them were just basic concepts, so. And I think too, you know, also assessing the last piece that you painted or what you did or, you know, making sure that you know, going through, I mean, even though I, I, you know, if I finish a piece and I'm super pleased, it's like, okay, what, what, there's gotta be something that could have, you know, could have been done better. Yeah, self-assessment's a big deal in all aspects of life, <laughs> not just your art. People could just get that through their heads. Like, take time and smell yourself. <laughs> Absolutely loves poker. Whole family. They're big into poker. I don't know a dick about poker. I just think it's really sexy that she likes poker. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, boxers watching their fights or football players watching their, you know, it's like anything. I mean, you don't, it doesn't have to be a sport in order to assess it and see if the play could have been better or the, I mean, that, you know, that, that's, that's a basic concept that just carries over how to make yourself a better person, how to paint a better picture, how to make better ramen, you know, oh, cool. So we're talking, talking what he, I'm sure does. <laughs> And paying attention to we knowing your weaknesses and, and, and laughing at them or, you know, knowing how to play into them or against them or that's a huge thing, especially in art. Like I said, for me, you know, when I created my comic book characters and I was not very good at drawing people yet, they were more skeletal, deformed, kind of shadow-faced creatures, and, and that was my style. I just I just came up with the coolest, I concentrated more on making it stylistically cool than until I actually learned how to draw humans, you know, and, but that kept me employed and it kept me, you know, putting books out and creating and drawing and, and then gave me the liberty to, to have time to explore um, how to do that or, little life drawing sessions or whatever it took, you know. <clears throat> yeah. But I, you know, I see it, I, I, I saw it early on, it's almost like being a comedian. It's like, they make careers 
out of just making fun of themselves, out of knowing their weaknesses and out of like just looking at them and going, you know, this isn't a weakness. This is a way to make money. This is a way to make a career. This is a way to face my weaknesses. I mean, I look at anything and I'm like, how's this going to make me a fucking dollar if I buy this or if I do this or if it's a weakness or, you know, I mean, how do I make it funny or that's, that's the way I look at it. Cause I mean, that's, that's exactly how most comedians are, you know, you know, oh, I'm a fat swab and blah, blah. you know, it's like Louis CK. I mean, that guy is so just, uh, self depreciating and, <laughs> But he's made an art out of it, you know? And aside from all that scandalous shit, just talking purely about his comedy and how his whole TV show is just about, like, what kind of a lump he is. You know, it's like, that guy knows himself, you know? Are you saying us artists are all depressed as well? <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not anywhere near fucking depressed. Absolutely not. I don't, I don't buy into that shit. Uh, and, well, not buying into depression, but... I don't buy into the fact that artists need to be depressed in order to, like, hone their skills or... True art does not come from self-torture. That German, that German romanticism is, is dead. Like, that movement's done. I have a great time. I mean, even if it, you know, even through the toughest times when I was making 500 bucks a month as an artist, you know, it was like, at least I was an artist. I was a full-time professional artist that ate ramen, you know, without an egg. You know, and I was bartering for going to the bar where my buddy worked and drinking for free and giving him art and whatever I needed to do to, you know, like, hey man, I got to eat tonight and it would like a beer. Or how do we get art supplies, you know, or... I mean, just, you know... But I was like, there's no... There's no depression in being an artist. A working artist. That didn't spend a hundred grand. <laughs> in art school. Yeah, good attitude, definitely, you know. And I was, you know, I, I had sales training, too. I mean, I was I was in ad specs for years. I was, I was a mortgage broker, as well. I mean, I... Um, I was in the thick of it right before the 08 crash, you know, I mean, I had some serious sales training and, you know, and, and all that helped. I mean, I just converted it into, okay, how do I, how do I apply these sales strategies to my artwork and, but not do it in like a used car sales fashion, just, just basic concepts, you know, and, and that was immensely helpful, you know? <laughs> way more helpful than a lot of the shit that I, you know, supposedly did to buffer, you know, or bump up my art career. My little brother asked, like, what's it, you know, what do you, when you, what's it need, what do you need to be an artist? I'm like, learn English, history, and get a telemarketing job, and you will be the most successful artist. Learn how to talk to people, learn where you came from, Always have good historical knowledge and learn how to sell. Because I mean, think of all the garbage out there, all the bat, all the Kincaid art, all the all just horseshit art that gets popular. They just had a good marketing team. Yeah. Not selling out is you know. I mean, selling out, selling out. That's just you know when you're. When you're just producing complete garbage for money's sake, for no apparent other reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kincaid's a buster. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. I just, uh... Yeah, and you just kind of go, you know, you grow in levels. I mean, I was happy just to be an artist at one point, you know, just to have that paycheck, have that combo. You know, when my first book came out, to hold my first book in my hand, 
and now I have 16 books out. I mean, it's, and then looking at like helping to build these rock shows up into, you know, uh, bringing them like the higher echelon of art. It's like each, each plateau, each new level is, uh, is always a, a thing to be, you know, excited about. I guess Tom is back. All right, she is fueled with some ramen. <laughs> I think I said she. Are you? I didn't know you if you were she. I don't know why that came out. Maybe it just sounds like a she name. Forgive me if I was wrong. Don't mean to assume on these channels. <laughs> All right. All right. So you see how we're opening it up a little bit down here. It's just kind of like all. Oh, it's just kind of. Opens up a little bit. Put a lot more uh, splashing and whatnot in here as well. And you know, I'm just trying to uh, kind of carve out the bigger waves. And then we'll uh, yeah. Some more of these little crack attic lines in here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked. It's been a good two weeks streaming. I'm, I'm quite happy with the productivity. I'm, I'm happy with the paintings that have come out. I'm, I can't wait to just debut all this artwork at the, the next big show. I mean, just to have like this new library of work coming out, you know, and the said welcome back <laughs> yeah yeah you missed your welcome back there's no doozies ovaries <laughs> that sounded very very weird <laughs> all right so we get some little foam bits whatever going on there sea tapeworms Lines coming in off, as opposed to keeping it framed in, definitely, you know, opens up the ocean more. Believable that it's actually coming off, you know, um, coming in from uh, from afar. salmon on fire like if you lit a salmon on fire it's exactly what you'd see just a beautiful fiery sunset the smell of fish just bought some nice salmon today actually got salmon on the brain <laughs> we have really good salmon up here Give a shout out to the fishing boat Desire. I buy it right off the boat. I didn't today, but 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, water's coming along a lot quicker than I thought, so I'm down with that. Anytime somebody or, or a, a painting painting moves a little bit quicker. But it's also sad. It means a fond farewell to this painting. It's coming soon. <laughs> Notification here. Oh, what do we got? We're all set up. At, uh... Oh yeah, that's my buddy Alfredo, who uh, is the guy that manufactures all my tapestries and um, face shields and bandanas. So he was just sending me some uh, photographs. <clears throat> of what they look like at the uh, festival he's at right now. So. They all got to check in. Got to make sure my stuff's presented well. So I was serious earlier, if you didn't hear me, like, we should name this guy. I'm open for suggestions. If you guys want to kick around a name. I feel like he's doing so much work to save this country. To free France. To liberate. We wouldn't want him in the tomb of the unknown whale. <laughs> you can name him Ramen. <laughs> do, 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 do. Pluton? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Pluton. J Jack Armstrong. <laughs> That's very specific. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, man. Pluton. <laughs> or ramen. Pluton. That's the shit. <laughs> What's Jack Armstrong? I know Stretch Armstrong. <clears throat> Maybe just Armstrong. Let's see here. <clears throat> Maybe these could be Plutons. These are these are Pluton mosquitoes. And then this is this is Armstrong the whale. Could we do that? I kind of like that, <clears throat> but we'll see how much, you know, copyright infringement we get if anybody's named a, a mosquito Pluton. <laughs> the Pluton mosquitoes, that almost sounds like a, like a Martian World War II Spitfire plane.
I am from the planet Ramen. I do see how that now. I have Armstrong family, that's that Armstrong cool American name. It, yeah, hell yeah. Armstrong the whale and Pluton the mosquitoes. We could do that. Yeah, I like good strong names like that. My my daughter's name is Guinevere and my son is Maximilian. And my son's name is uh well Max Maximum Maximilian means the greatest and Dietrich means ruler of the people, so his name literally means the greatest ruler of the people, so I figure even if he's a janitor when he grows up, he's gonna be like king of the fucking janitors. Like he'll have a gold mop and a bucket made of like kryptonite. <laughs> but Maximilian was also like, you know, Maximilian Shell was a great actor and Maximilian the robot from the um the black hole movie and, and uh Max Dietrich was actually a World War I German Zeppelin pilot. He was their first Zeppelin ace. So he's got a lot of history in his name, and then Guinevere, of course, King Arthur and all that. So, you know, definitely love strong names, for sure. Don't like runny noses. My apologies, and you wipe my nose on camera. All right, that means it's done for another PBR. Sweet. Cheers. Friday. Woo! Saturday here, too. 1202. We're raging. We got water. Uh, a couple more of these little lines over here, and uh, I think um, it's time for some splatter work. Yeah. I'm very pleased with how open, kind of the transition from the crunchier water to the more open sea. So right now we're just kind of you know, adding a little bit of action in here. Wherever the brush tells me to go. Yeah, I think it's like just his name, you know. Like Bob Hammerstein. But if it's just like, call me Hammerstein, you know. Done. Fuck Bob. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes if you just have a badass last name, do you really need? Do you need a first name? <laughs> do you need a middle name? <laughs> or like Prince, his single name was so cool and he made it so cool that he turned into a symbol for a while. Like, hey, if your single name is so is is so cool, you could even transcend and become a symbol. You could be a pictograph. Like a walking hieroglyphic. And then, uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into a few more darker lines on the whale in here. And I miss Prince, too. Dude was just chill. Very, I, we're not gonna get anybody like him in it ever again. <laughs> that was, I think when he died, that was the coolest meme I saw on the internet was him licking the lollipop and it said sorry terrorist there's no more virgins in, he in heaven <laughs> I'm like only prince <laughs> definitely that was meme of the year
That was some baby making water. All right. Llama A, next day grooves, demo control, class A deviance. Let's cycle through some tunes here. The Beethoven of Pop Rock. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> bring, bring it in for a close up on that line work. detail work phase we have the foam to put here we're gonna bring in that explosion I think and then um, we'll do a few white highlights and, uh, and get this this water this, this juicy spit thanks bud appreciate it yeah I'm liking how this came out it's be good all these are uh, all gonna be in this new art book too um, I'm gonna put out towards the end of the year so every time I go out on tour now I'm gonna uh, take all the new art that I did Put it into a little little magazine, you know, format, and then um, uh, uh, print it. Oh, bring it out on tour. Yeah, I'm like, oh, what? um, but yeah. So I did like a spring edition, and then that way, when like people come up or repeat customers come up, especially to the uh, booth, hey, Sean, what's new? Check out the book, and they flip through it, and it's got all the books. So the uh, so the Hatter and Hunter and this and everything that I, I produce up in, until I leave in mid-August will be um, uh, will be put together in this little magazine. So, and maybe I'll dedicate it to like my first like ten followers who hung with me at the beginning, sent me cigars and helped with technical. <laughs> yeah, and I'm due to put out a new uh, a new art book. I think at the beginning of next year. So, like a full. Uh, Full 100, 100 page art book or something like that. I put an 80 page one out two years ago it's called Confidence Pig. And, um, but yeah, I'll have the tour guide out and then I'll collect that. Let's go in with, um, where is my, where's that little thin brush? Well, I'm probably sitting here in the water getting squished now. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, in fact, we'll just use this one. Uh, I, I do, if you look online, I do have my Confidence Pig uh, limited edition hand painted. There's 25 of these. They're, they're hardcover editions of the book. They have a canvas front so I can paint on the book itself then it comes in a uh, box a custom-made box velvet lined book sits in and because it's called confidence pig the box itself is lacquered in bacon so I, I, I lacquer bacon to preserve it and attach it to the front of the uh, and I think they're like 800 bucks or a thousand bucks online but yeah um, but if you check out the confidence Pig edition online you know, uh, it's, it's on SeanDietrichArt.com. Check it out, you know, so, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. And I basically like when, when, when somebody buys one, you, we will work together on what I paint on the front, you know, so you just, it's, it's an experience. <laughs> But I have a buddy of mine that builds the boxes and, you know, so. Very, very cool stuff, you know. What is he sampling in this song? He's playing a porno in the background. Yeah. Oh, I could do a combination of, like, a hunter and the hatter riding a whale. And <laughs> That'd be a pretty dope cover. Yeah, I, I always like to put out something unique that, you know, higher-end collectors kind of like, and 
or something that adds to the experience of like actually working with the artist and you know I like stuff I like stuff like that I've, I've got a few a few pieces in my personal collection from artists that I admire that I worked with and it's just like Listerine I just brushed my fucking teeth and now I gotta go to battle kind of dipped into that blue, I'm going to use that to shade the teeth, give them a little bit of a, kind of a hay I'm up underneath this, uh, this gum line and this metal plating here, there we go. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to blacken in that eye in the end and just put a nice blob of white in there and that'll really make that eye just scream. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about this explosion here. So what I'll do, grab my pencil. I'm just going to show you how I kind of add elements, you know, even though the painting's technically done almost, you know. So we'll, we'll go kind of pencil in a little, you know, just a nice little explosion there and... Yeah, right behind the pillbox, we'll make that pop. Yeah, you know, and then we'll uh, definitely have a little guy come here, there. Yeah, you know, we'll do the big one here. Something like that. I feel like it should go over. Yeah, we should do something like that. Alright, so. Uh, then for that, we'll pop open a new beautiful chinette. Okay. And basically, we'll block it in with the, um, with the color and then I'll do the uh, color stripping away and then we'll uh, we'll do the final detail and out outlining on it. A little bit of ink. Because we don't use that black paint. Yeah, I've cranked through that ink in the last week because I've done so many paintings in a row. Let's put an order in. That was way too much ink, okay. <laughs> I love doing these explosions in this kind of grayish blue. Let's just do a little mixing in there. A little more blue. Bring it out here. Yeah, we can do it. Gray. Okay, basically, we're just going to. Rub in the explosion, the main um, balls of smoke. notifications <laughs> we have a little fiery uh, thing here there we 
go. Some sort of notification. Let's see. Bring that in there. It's still pretty good and wet, so let's kind of even that out, and then we'll um. Flying out of the explosion. It's a little bit of smoke, a little bit of somebody's not happy back there. <laughs> how Bob Ross makes trees, but you just kind of tap it in. But I'm blowing shit up. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, so there's your base. There's black smoke. You can even kind of go in and Some of that pure blue just on the edge there for variation for now. And then, uh... Okay. Now! That's just... That's one third. Rule one. gonna go in and we are just gonna tap a little bit of that paint off better than Bob Ross fuck Bob Ross no I'm kidding I love Bob Ross <laughs> alright we want to get it basically down to a more, you know, whatever consistency, and uh, a couple swigs of beer, and, and then we'll make the magic happen. <laughs> I know, he's just so rad. Bob is the shit. <laughs> Anybody who's just like, I don't care, all of you can paint. I'm going to show you how to do it with like a paintbrush you have laying around in your garage and <clears throat> do this. But if you want the Bob Ross, uh, Bob Ross 4 inch brush instead of $12 at Home Depot, you got to pay $90 to have his Afro head like silk screened on it. <laughs> you know, like, like, 
Come on, Bob. Don't give us that bullshit about living in the woods and befriending squirrels. And then you're gonna try and sell me a $90 fucking paintbrush. Get the lawyers out. Tell them to go away. <laughs> yeah. And then we go in with the tapity tap. In fact, we can just gray going right there. We'll expand upon that in a minute. Boom. Now we have a debris field. There's all sorts of shit flying around in there. There we go. Be a quiet ass movie. <laughs> Uh, I, I think so. I think it'd be very cool if people actually knew, you know. The problem is with um, what I've read is even though not a lot of, is known about his personal life, like even his friends and people that are alive today, like I think keep it pretty pretty quiet. Like they kind of respect the fact that he didn't want to be, you know, like he did what he did and that should be good enough. Which I think is pretty cool. Or maybe he was just this horrible fucking monster off camera and he said that he was uh, going to come back after he died and haunt him. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know if he... Uh, he was just chill from what I've read. It was like he just, you know, had a very... I don't know, it was super private life or whatnot, but... But I did, when I was, I, I actually did a painting of Bob Ross for uh, the publisher of her magazine as a, um, he, he wanted a commission. He's like, I need a, an actual painting of Bob Ross in my uh, office. And I'm like, yeah. So in, in just doing, you know, research, it was like I, all the normal stuff and that I could find out about him being a drill sergeant and all that was pretty out in the public. But. Yeah, they just said like a not a lot of, you know, there's not that much more information about them than what you can find online, and that's kind of cool. All right, so now we're just going to go in and add like a little whatever the fuck's flying out there to the end of these. trunks of the explosion I always like to do is a little silhouetted smaller little blast coming in so I'll get you a nice little close up view of that. Yeah.
kind of slam the side of the brush down to get that thicker. Thicker line. Thanks, Moon. Still hanging in there? <laughs> yeah, just dropping in this, uh, this little explosion behind the pillbox. Just kind of adds a little more action to the painting and doesn't look like he's just some psychotic whale attacking a peaceful uh, coastal town. But there's actually a reason for him and his buddies. Lurking and bouncing. <laughs> I'll probably do that myself after I finish this. I took I fell asleep at like seven six thirty, seven, slept till like eight, completely slept through dinner. I don't know, I'm taking weird naps lately. Taking like old people naps. I'll just zone out. End of its run. That's okay. There's a Michaels just down the street. <laughs> draw a knife in it, <laughs> you gotta draw along. Get your gear out. I don't want to deter people. <laughs> Sean's destroyed the careers of many artists because he streams. Keeping you from being creative, you know. I do. You know where I got this technique from when doing these explosions is actually, hang on, let me grab the, uh, not 
too much weed. OCB rolling tray. When I was doing Pele's hair, uh, and, and I made her a volcano in Hawaii, so her head is actually, starts off as her hair and then it explodes out. But that's where I, I got the technique for doing all the little curlies, you know, inside the explosion and, and whatnot. But that's how, you know, all the volcanoes uh, blowing up. But yeah, so that was the OCB ring of fire rolling tray that I did for them. I think this piece is up online. If you want to examine it a little more. But yeah, sometimes, you know, what I'm actually using technique wise is not something I've used for forever. It could be something very new. Always trying to experiment with different ways of drawing, you know. Just like water explosions. I mean these are two elements that are very can be difficult to accomplish and, and to draw. Uh, especially stylistically. You know. bugging me. Damn, damn. God damn it. Okay. Love when my friends think I give a shit. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, Vin Vinnie Paul died today, huh? Best known for his work as a drummer in Pantera. Oh. Was that today? I just, he just sent me the uh, the link to it. Another awesome musician gone. Hopefully not from something fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Get that dark going back there. It's where the bulk of whatever's burning is burning. The thick smoke. debris kind of on the edge of the explosion here just to add to it No, that's ink. That's the ink that I put in the bowl. Uh, not acrylic paint. The ink actually works really well over washes and whatnot. This stuff works over anything. Um, that was just the black ink that I put in the bowl to, to mix the gray. So I'm just using up the rest of it because I put way too much in the bowl. I needed like a drop and I put like a multitude of drops. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. No, this ink will go over anything. Um, well, maybe not wet oils, but you, you get the point. Yeah. yeah, just trying to use up a little bit of the ink. Um, good observation on that, though, because if it didn't go over acrylic washes, then that would. But no, it goes fine. I mean, that's how I do all the detail work. Is uh, um, just going right over the acrylic. Just like 
uh, these little twisty lines that kind of make it look like almost like knotted yarn. Just like throwing out these yarn rope explosions. Oh, yeah, ah, oh, good observation, yeah. Yeah, if I, if I need to add black to something, I, I, I still use the ink as opposed to the uh, uh, black paint. The only time I really use black paint is um, when, I'm, when I'm like painting the edges of the canvas. <laughs> Just if I do black in the edges of the canvas for, uh, so it looks nice and clean while it's hanging on a wall. Um, if they don't frame it, I do have black paint laying around for that. So it's got more of just an industrial purpose. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> we have a explosion. We are getting there. We are getting there. We are almost finished. I rinse this brush off a little bit. Get some form back to these bristles. Right. Oh, chair keeps rolling away on me. Okay. Crazy preacher sign. There's this voodoo frog. Oh, yeah, there is. There's the crazy preacher yelling in this one. But the sample with all the chanting is actually like a bunch of voodoo kids, uh, or yeah, a bunch of children like doing a voodoo ceremony. <laughs> Make sure they live a prosperous life. Sugar girl add some pretty cool uh, samples into the music. And the artwork that this went to was a frog holding up a booby doll, so. It fits the theme. All right, so let's go ahead and get some of that black. I have set the soul out of the well. All right. Now he just looks like completely hollow. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's a fun explosion. Grab a little white. I think it adds just the right amount of action. Just kind of off screen there, or just off to the right. And then we'll go just dip straight in the white paint. Just dot that eye, give him a little secondary shine right there. That way it's nice, clean, pure, pure white in the canvas, and, uh, and then a little close up on the explosion as well. You get those little swirls in there, so it adds a little action to the explosion itself. All right, I drink a beer and. 
stare at it for a minute. Figure out where I want to put some highlights and I gotta put all the uh, let's get that stamp in that foam. <laughs> Yeah, you just gotta tighten it up and then make sure there's some nice lines that draw the, you know, draw you towards the whale. I mean, if you look at it, it's all swirling, but it brings you out and then the whale brings you down. That's kind of your line of sight, you know. And you got your mosquitoes pointing. So everything kind of works together. Nice S curve. Um. Oh, let me get a. Smoosh. Smush a brush open. And just kind of dip it into that white. Some of that foam going in there. Dropping the brush. Right around there. Just a, just a little bit of almost looks like he's he's got a fur coat on. I can take a little blue into that. Just tap some blue. There we go. All right. <laughs> Now we're gonna go in with a bigger black blob and cover all that up. <laughs> and right, this one's for you, <laughs> cigars are. <laughs> it's like when I didn't paint the eye in on the other painting and that, and that just bugged people. <laughs> like, come on, man, paint the fucking eyeball. <laughs> we will get there. <laughs> Put right on the edge here, just a little white. Just a little separation between the green of the machine gun and the front of the whale. Yeah, yeah, that pulls that machine gun out a little bit further off the uh, the mosquito. <laughs> Journeyman 1029, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it, thanks for hopping in. Did I go through the whole fucking playlist again? I did. All right. Time for some bird calls again. Yeah, I do now. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is my second week. So, second week and third painting. <laughs> welcome, welcome, yeah. We got a good crew here. Yeah, I've been, you know, the usual, lurking for a few months, meeting people, 
kind of getting my setup going and then uh yeah i'm having a blast really getting into it getting a lot of work done <laughs> i gotta make sure not to smudge that eye too i've done that a million times in paintings where i'm like put the eye in and i'm like yeah and then he's got this big fucking streak and i'm like all right You guys could actually probably place bets as to whether I'll do it or not. for the kind words it's uh it's all acrylic and the black is all ink so it's all hand painted um but it is all paint i think i just highlighted all those mosquitoes off camera because i didn't realize my yeah so so just paint on canvas um about 99 percent of, of what i do is is that so uh, i have dabbled in, in mixed media I've, I've done some pretty more performance art type stuff on, you know, stage during a Halloween show or something. But <laughs> but yeah, just putting the final highlights in on this piece and things pop. Alright, so far I haven't smeared the eyeball yet. Yeah, Journeyman, check out the Instagram, website, all that good stuff, too. If you got an iGram, add me. There we go. and it's just the sky showing through. There we go. That helped. There we go. Yeah, much better. Looks like it's its own thing now instead of just like part of the sky. That's what I'm gonna say. <clears throat> yeah, conceptual painting. A painting for a painting. Warm in here. 
Do you have a heater on? Yeah. And this all started from that. <laughs> so there you go. Sketch. Boom. Oh, nice. Thank you for the raid. The goldfish has come to <laughs> Awesome. Take your yarn. <laughs> Dude, my whale will eat that tuna head or whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you so much for the raid. Raid. I need to make that an alert. That old bug on those old commercials for Raid just screaming. <clears throat> <coughs> I didn't forget as my goldfish memory is. So <laughs> Welcome back. And yes, yes, you did, you did say you would be back. And you're here for the, the final highlights. I'm just adding a few, uh, few touches, uh, highlights to the painting. This is where I kind of dick around and come too close to almost overworking it and, <laughs> and then save it in the end. Yeah, so I'll do a little, little, little pan and pan around. So we got our 30 cal machine gun mosquitoes. Added the explosion above the pillbox here. You guys can see that line work. Just like watch it come off the screen. Ooh, there we go. Anybody on shrooms? And then the whale itself. Thanks for the follow, Radley Designs. Appreciate it. Yeah, so put a little bit of the, the final white, you know, highlights in there and uh, try not to smear his eyes. I find more places up here I need to work. And uh, making sure it's on camera too. Yeah, for all the newcomers, this is a, kind of a conceptual piece. I have a bigger 4x6 painting I'm working on, commemorating my friend's grandfather who stormed Normandy and uh, fought at the Battle of St. Lowe and whatnot. So I'm doing a surrealistic, uh, taking all the vehicles and animalizing them and whatnot, um, tribute to, uh, to his grandfather. This thing, this, the painting itself is conceptually been in the works for about three years now. I, I had to read a couple books, I had to watch some documentaries, I had to really kind of go, uh, how do I take on this challenge? But all in all, I'm excited for how it's, uh, how it's coming out and, and the progress. And once I finally made that decision to really kind of go with the uh, animalistic uh, vehicles, I think it all came together. So I'm excited to, to get work on the big, the big piece as well, which I'll start penciling as I do these paintings. I am going to start doing the um, uh, the next painting I'm going to do is a specific painting of the mosquito, the 30 caliber machine gun mosquito, and then uh, I'll do one of the uh, Sherman tank. And then here's the sketches of like the Valkyries. It'll be up at the top of the painting. Um, oops, here's the leopard tank girl. So the girl wrapped, naked girl wrapped on the German flag with the reaper blade. So this will be on one side of the painting and then the uh, Valkyries will be on the other side. Oh, here it is. Then the next vehicle will be the uh, Sherman tank, but it's uh, it's like an armored centipede. And uh, boom. But right now I wanted to start off with the whale. So World War II landing craft. And if you go to SeanDietrichArt.com, the first two paintings that are featured are the ones that I did over the last couple weeks here streaming. So this is my um, uh, this is my second week streaming. So I knocked out a uh, Mad Hatter kind of dab Hatter piece and a uh, Hunter S. Thompson Fear and Bourbon 
So Hunter Thompson drinking a lot of bourbon. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I like, uh, I don't know. It, it was weird because I, I came up with a whole different variation on how I was going to do this painting for this guy. And it was going to be a lot more almost like serious and dreary. And I was like, you know, then I kind of came up with the idea of animalizing. And I'm like, I asked him, I'm like, do you mind if I go like real Salvador Dali on this shit? <laughs> and he was totally cool with it. I said, I kind of just want to give it that really surreal feeling and, and just create this whole, you know, just almost like maybe what went on in some of these guys' minds. I don't, I don't know. Just like it was absolutely that weird to go to war at that age. Here, you know what we're going to do? We're going to white out these eyes. And uh, actually, they look really cool with just white eyes, but... The bourbon was the one I ever said. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm a big Hunter S. Thompson fan, so doing that painting. And, and it's for a bourbon fest in uh, in Kentucky in um, September called Bourbon and Beyond. There we go. And we'll go back in and put their... Uh, Here's a little more round. There we go. A little less sleepy. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay. Cool, cool. And I think I want to, um, you know what? We're going to. Where's that brush? And let's go back into my. So I tap a little black into that. It's not going to be a black blob, cigars are. Don't worry, but I need to put some shadows up in here. There we go. The black blob is back. Yeah. So there's the lines on the water, and we'll get a we'll get a few little highlight lines in the water for sure. <laughs> I just want to want to get some highlights on the tail. Thanks, dude. I'm glad you enjoyed this one. You you've seen them all since I started. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the mosquito next, and uh, we'll do the Sherman tank creature. So we'll have all three creatures, and and yeah, I still got that Monty Python and the Holy Grail commission. I got, I got plenty of work to keep me busy on the stream. And once I get Sugar set up with his turntables in here, we'll, uh, we'll get him DJing. I just need to shut up. <laughs> Not if you're going to compliment. Yeah. You start bugging me about black blobs. <laughs> White whale. Yeah, and any any newcomers, uh, Instagram at Sean Dietrich, SeanDietrichArt.com is my website. You can check out all the finished paintings, merchandise, prints, all that good stuff. Time lapses. I time lapse almost all of my work. And my buddy who for some reason smoked a bunch of weed and disappeared, he usually sits here and makes music. Um, but he produces all the music you're hearing right now and, um, uh, and for the time lapses that are on the YouTube. So I just read your Walmart section on your website. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was actually, I was on tour in Australia two years ago, three years ago. And, um, I came up with the term Walmartist. I've, I've done so many Comic-Cons and I absolutely can't fucking stand the fan art booths. 
Um, I have no problem doing fan art. I mean, I, I got my own Alice in Wonderland shit I do and all that, but at least mine, there's no copyright. That's one of my, but these guys would throw up these huge booths of just garbage fan art and, and they have no legacy. And at first I used to just be ruthlessly, I, I just hate them. And, and now I try and like encourage them to just like, Hey man, you know, it's cool to come up with your own, your own creatures, your own concepts. I mean, and just kind of push them in that direction for, um, you know, if you want to leave a, a legacy as an artist, you have to think up your own shit. You can't just be doing Rick and Morty ripoff art because you think that's what people are going to buy. Yeah. And they're selling like prints three for 10 bucks. Fuck off. Like you are not going to make money that way. You know, it's like, you're not going to survive. You know, don't worry. <laughs> Dude, I sell like 11 by 17s for like 30 bucks each online, three for sale. I still think that's cheap. But, I mean, you know, I keep my originals high and where they need to be. But yeah, I just, these huge mega fan art, you know, because it's just like a blatant slap in the face. It's like, I don't, I don't care if the creators are Rick and Morty or millionaires making money off that cartoon. Like, they fucking deserve it. You know, they, they came up with something hilarious and, or any of the cartoon characters out there. It's like, it's not for you to like, take money out of their pocket. And if you want to do something like that, ask them. If anything, it may get you in front of them and they may be like, man, we really like your style. Why don't we put out a line of prints or whatnot with your, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you just never know what opportunity might come out, you know, uh, from trying to do something legit. They're not going to sue you for, you know, asking them to sell a piece of fan art. But that's funny. Yeah, so I coined the term Walmart. That's just that's that's what I think of fan artists. I, I think they're just the Walmart of of artists. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and, and I you know I went through that whole phase. I I, I did eighteen years at, at San Diego Comic Con, and you know it was like you know when people come up and want sketches, and I had to do Death and Sandman and Spider Man and Venom, and you know because they wanted my style of it. It was like I, you know that's just what you did. I mean, to, to make that dollar, you know. But I just I really concentrated on coming up with my own shit. I was able to cost me a superhero character, superhero for what are suits. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. There was um. <laughs> there was one guy, my my current publisher. Um, he was across from somebody who basically took still frames from movies, like a Thor or Spider-Man, and then put them through a Photoshop filter and did prints. And I was like, you're out of your mind. And it was, uh, oh, it was absolutely horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got a link to your art, anybody who's watching, please link your art in the chat. Um, I'm, I'm all about open community, sharing the art. I love to check out new art. So, you know, please feel free. You know, because eventually I, I, you know, I'm working towards having my own agency. I had, I just built this brand new studio here in Washington. I just signed a couple manufacturing deals. I can produce products, whatever. So, um, you know, over the next year, I'm going to start kind of collecting and, 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 uh, you know, links and looking at artwork and, trying to build up relationships. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, I jump around. <laughs> Once I'm done this, I'll probably be lurking for the next couple hours. I got a fresh 12 pack, it's Saturday morning. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of the coolest streams. I, I always uh, always jump in there. I've, I've got my fade. I'll have to put you on uh, on the auto host. I know I got a few. I got Silicon Bleach and uh, I think a few others. Yeah, there we go. Some of that line work just coming through there. 
Cannon. Yeah, super cool, dude. Uh, I just happened on his stream at random one night when no one else I usually watch was on, and I was like, oh, cool. Or it may have popped up as a recommendation, you know. But his work is fantastic. You know? Yeah, but when uh, when Journeyman is uh, is uh, streaming cigars, are you need to need to jump on and check it out? All right. Well, looks like water. Looks like a whale. You may have a painting. <laughs> for like these little little cloud lines. Just kind of coming off the coast here. Could be clouds, could be a little French town burning. You never know. It's World War II. There we go. Leg back. Sometimes they really, you get, you put all this work in, get up to that point, and then, you know, boom, put a few highlights in, and it kind of completes it. But, yeah, I got a few little lines on the whale tail here. The whale tail. I'm just kind of, screwing around at this point, but. <laughs> Dude, you can totally promote yourself in here. Feel free, man. Drop your link. Even if you don't feel comfortable, I demand it. <laughs> no, I'm all about it. I, I have no problem with uh, if you want to drop a link to it. Like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll pop you on my auto host and... Uh, Be showing you off anyway. <laughs> Tell them, yeah. Damn right. <laughs> I don't expect the same. Don't worry. I'm not gonna hop over to your stream and start throwing my link up everywhere. So don't think that you know I do that because of that. I just, you know, if it if sparks a conversation or gets people in chat to start sharing some art, that's totally cool with me. You shared a link. I'm coming to dinner. <laughs> and I only eat fish. There we go. Alrighty. There's the twist. Alright, cool. <laughs> Maybe, uh... Yeah, let's see. I think I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do is, um, some stuff. Okay. Let's get 
a little bit of water. Let's go into that white. I'm just gonna kinda put a little bit of white in there. There we go. Bit around the edges. A little, little sea spray, a little, a little more texture. Never have too much texture. There we go. And my hands weren't dirty enough, so yeah, journeyman stuff is awesome. Yeah, well, again, I you know came into your stream just to watch you. I, I wasn't gonna be like, hey, <laughs> I do art. But that's cool. Now we're connected, and, and, and you know, I really dig your stuff. I love your stream too. So, um, very, very fun stream to watch. That's a viewer of mine. Yeah, I've had that happen a few times. A few people pop up. I had one guy. We've been connected on Facebook for years, and he was just like, "Wait, wait a minute." <laughs> I think if I, uh, yeah, okay, cool. I got such a good, good crowd in here tonight. I almost don't want to call it finished, but I think we are. I think this one's a, a wrap. Get my ink and sign this. So I'll sign them. Yeah, I'll sign it down there. Fireball four three five. Thanks for following, bud. Yeah, yeah. I know. You know, gotten into some good discussions in your stream about you know the intricacies and, and ethics of being an artist, and um, and I, I really like that. Really like that about your stream. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this piece. Let me zoom in. Drop the sig right in here. Well, it is after midnight, so what date am I putting on this? My phone. June 23rd. Got it already? There we go. Ta-da! Kind of pan around now that I'm zoomed in, you guys. And I'll. <clears throat> hey, thanks, man. Thanks for the host. Um, yeah. So now that it's finished, I'll, I'll just kind of pan around and, and uh, see, so you, you know, see all the detail. Um, so you get the explosion coming off right above the pillbox and, and whatnot. And uh, it's funny when you zoom in on this; it, it really has that old comic book look to it. You know, here's one of our 30 caliber mosquitoes. You know. Which uh, will be the next painting I'll start on Monday, and um, so we'll do we'll do a really detailed look at how, like you know, like I said, the bullets will probably come out of some sort of cavity, you know, in here, and uh, maybe he'll be uh, more organic up to this point, and this will be an attachment to hold ammunition, or who knows, you know, we'll, something I'll think about. Uh, here's the other two guys helping out here, go into all the detail around his mouth, and uh, where the landing craft gate kind of drops open. All the spittle, and then into the line work of the uh, of the ocean. Yes, yeah, all the color is acrylic, and I, d I don't use uh, any black paint. This is all um, uh, Holbein, which is a really badass Japanese ink. 
Uh, let's see, Holbein Inc. There you go. So that's the ink I use. It's super opaque. And if uh, if you've never heard of it, it's it's uh, so I can ink, and then five seconds later I could throw a bucket of water on this, and and the ink wouldn't run. So so I like doing outlines, you know, first, and then I'll I'll do all these color washes, just kind of eh, it's a little purple. I know there's going to be an explosion here, some blues, but that can all be done over the initial ink line, and then um um it, yeah, and and the, the, it shows through. It's it's one of the most opaque inks that you'll. Uh, you'll use. Um, Sergio Argonas uses it. Disney used the, their gouache for their animation shells and whatnot. Um, yeah, completely waterproof ink. Not like Higgins Black Magic, which for some reason used to work, and then one day I outlined it and I threw my washes on it. The whole painting just smeared off the canvas. I was like, wow, you know, I was so pissed. But I don't know if they changed the formula or, or whatever, but you know. Um, but yeah, Holbein. I know you can get it on Dick Blick, or I buy it on Amazon because there's a places I can get two day like shipping on it. And then all the color is acrylic, and uh, just basically washes in the background. And then I go in and build up the layers on top of that. And I keep my paints in this beautiful PBR lunchbox. If you do not have one, I highly recommend it. It's a great place to keep your paints. Cheers. <laughs> mm hmm I hate that I and I I mean you use something for years you have expectations and then you use it and, and it's like thanks guys and I don't know what uh yeah because you you do a lot of ink washing and whatnot too right and uh I hate when they do that I don't know if it's like a cheaper version or less inexpensive ingredients or whatever but they they really needed to up their game on the on that so but I was at Comic-Con actually in San Diego and the whole bind rep came up to me and he saw me working with uh, black magic and he's like he's like oh you brush ink and I'm like yeah and he's like he's like well that's a dying breed and I'm like yeah but whatever <laughs> so um, yeah so I, I he gave me a sample bottle I used it it was amazing and then every year subsequent uh, when he came up I was like whatever sample bottles you got in the bag there. I'm like, don't just give me one. <laughs> so I would try and like just take everything from him, you know, I'm like, give me all the ink. <laughs> and it, it, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, but acrylics I've been using a long time. I, I started live painting at nightclubs back in 99 and, and festivals and uh, I needed something that dried quick. Uh, I did work in oils back in the day, but it's just a pain in the ass, so. Yeah, damn right. The dyeing arts are the good arts, you know? Brush ink. I just, I can't do digital. I, you don't get dirty. Your hands, see? These aren't digital artist hands. All smeary and blue and, you know. that's That means I did something. I don't know. I just, I can't. There's no, it's not tactile enough. I mean, I tried some digital art, and like I said, I'll... I'll make flyers and shit in Photoshop. That's about the extent of my uh, digital art talent. But outside of that, I eh, just never got into it. But uh, yeah, I just love the grittiness. And uh, yeah, journeyman's art too. All the textures you got and whatnot. That's that's what attracted me to your art um, when I was, you know, first first found your stream. But yeah, so this uh, this is painting one. So the the concept that this will be a part of is a six foot by four foot painting which I, fit, I have to figure out a obviously a different camera uh, configuration on how to stream that one but um uh i'll figure it out <laughs> that's why i'm doing these conceptual paintings too it gives me time to figure out how to how to stream a giant painting but you know um oh, i got a raid now nice another one noel brooks nice Hell yeah, thank you so much. Hi, hi, hi. That's awesome. Thank you guys. You're coming at a good time. I'm just finishing up a finishing up a new piece here. Let me slide it down. There we go. I'll let the emote raid. <laughs> the carpet bombing of emotes. <laughs> See, we'll fit in the war theme anywhere we uh, anywhere we can. So, cheers. Grab a nice cold PBR. I bought my mom yarn recently. A lot of them uh, love the line work. Thank you so much, uh, Noel. Noel Brooks. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Thank you. 
Yeah. So all ink. I'll get a little close up there on the line work, on the whale's eye and uh, and whatnot. Um. Yeah, and I'll show off. So since there's so many new people popping in, I'll show us. I'll show the sketches again. So this is conceptually one character for a giant six foot by four foot uh, painting commemorating my buddy's grandfather who stormed Normandy and fought at the Battle of St. Lo and worked his way into Germany. So, so this, this is something that's been working. I've been working on for three years, coming up with just the general concepts. So, so I'm starting to analyze all the vehicles in World War II. So I got a Sherman tank that's this armored centipede. Um, so I basically disassembled parts of the Sherman tank and then gave him like this kind of just drippy tongue, you know, with the teeth coming through. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a big piece, so. And then uh, on either side of it, we're gonna have, like this is, uh, she's actually gonna be a, uh, her own painting. It's gonna be a pinup girl on top of a leopard tank, but it's a, the naked German girl with a flag wrapped around her. She's got the reaper blade. She's gonna represent the evil. It's gonna be on the right-hand side of the painting. And then the Valkyries are gonna be on the left-hand side. So these are just the concept sketches to show the client what, uh, you know, what, what's gonna go on on the painting, so. Um, so that's kind of represents, and then in the middle is going to be the, um, it's going to be a giant hill in the St. Lowe Cathedral, which was basically the only standing structure after the battle. Um, there's going to be uh, this priest uh, or bishop of some sort. He's just kind of, yeah, you know, it's just a quick sketch. He's going to be standing up there and basically his face is just going to be melting away and the cathedral will be in the background. And then all those Sherman tanks are going to be, there's going to be a bunch of, like a horde of centipedes crawling up the, uh, uh, up the hill in order to, um, to kind of complete the battle. So, um, and then, yeah, uh, shandietrickart.com is my website. If you go there, I think the first two featured paintings are the paintings that I just completed over my first two weeks streaming here. So I did a fear and loathing Hunter S Thompson with a bunch of wild Turkey bourbon barrels and, uh, Oh, cool. Journeyman. 4.30 a.m. Yeah, man. Sleep, sleep's on the agenda, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you on your stream. And, and uh, thanks for the follow and, and uh, whatnot. Um, I'll throw you on the auto host, too. Um, and definitely check out Journeyman stuff if you haven't. Amazing stuff. You know. And thank you for all the follows. Uh, I see a bunch popping up here. So um, I appreciate it. And, yeah, I j just finished up this piece tonight. Just signed it. But so I'm just kind of letting it settle and... Uh, drinking a beer and talking about the painting and um and then and then the first painting i did um i literally just started streaming two weeks ago was a mad hatter bunch of honeycomb stuck to his hat and a little honeybee it's it's gonna be for a line of uh uh like smoke shop products uh i thought i had some samples around here i got the stickers here's the little uh teapot dad brig with the uh, mad hatter smoking on his uh <laughs> His little rig, so. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's see what else I got to show off here. Eh, not much. No. Just the painting itself. Hang on one second. But yeah, I got, um, <clears throat> oh, here he is. Yeah, and there's the Cheshire that we did, or I did. And then we got him on a little, uh, little mood mat. So, yeah, it's all acrylic. So acrylic paint for the color, and then, um, what's the name, Holbein, Japanese ink for the uh, line work. And this is all uh, all done with a liner brush, the ink work. So nothing, nothing digital, no pens, um, no Copic markers or anything like that. It's just straight up uh, acrylic. I started out in comic books. Uh, I, I got probably five or six indie books that I did, Industrious Side, Fervor, Mass Catalepsy. I'm sure you can find some copies on eBay or whatnot from many, many years ago. And then uh, I got picked up by PlayStation, worked on Twisted Metal for a game that didn't get produced, but it was still a fun project. Um, I had to come up with the backstory for Sweet Tooth the Clown and, and why he was a psychotic killer. Uh, and then from there, I hopped into, uh, my first comic came out, so I hopped into, um, doing live art at nightclubs in, in San Diego and LA and, and then doing the festival circuit. And now I tour, um, 
that's all over the world. I, I did Australia a couple of years ago, and, and I do all the big rock shows across the U.S. that Danny Wimmer puts on, and, and uh, I do live art there. So um, a lot of what I do is, um, you know, in front of crowds, you know, so hopping on Twitch and, and streaming just seemed like a next natural step. I'm going to be painting anyway, right? Might as well be uh, doing it live. I'm trying to think if there's anything I would work on. I was about to hop off, but I had so many people jump on. I feel like an ass for <laughs> like ending the stream or whatnot. But um, I guess I could uh, let me see. I don't know if I have a canvas around. I can start on something. Not really. But anyway, yeah, make sure you add me on Instagram too. Um, yeah, I know. I'm like, hey, now I get the biggest raid. I got 25 people and I'm like, hey, hey, I'm done. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yes, I could pass the raid on to someone else. You know what? I've never raided anybody. How do I do it? I haven't even figured out how to do it. So anybody want to, can, can somebody walk me through it? I'll, I'll go raid somebody. <laughs> People are like, no. Raid hype. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, cool. Oh, baby, and more. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight and uh, and whatnot. Nagisama eat ramen. Usually tells us what to type. Uh, okay, you type. Uh, oh, so it's just backslash raid and then username. Um, yeah. Hang on a second. Let me uh, let me open up. Uh, bear with me. Just listen to the tunes. Who's on right now? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Crazy like Swayze's on. We'll go raid him. <laughs> Yeah, before you, uh, before I, I do this raid thing, um, yeah, thank you everyone. Follow, please. Um, I stream 9 p.m. until uh, whenever the hell on um, Monday through Friday. And then uh, weekend streams are just random whenever I have time. Instagram, at Sean Dietrich. All my information's in, in my, um, you know, little thingamahoob there. And then um, uh, SeanDietrichArt.com, Facebook. So let's see. So I type in raid. Let's see if uh, I get this to work. All right, first, you guys can be a part of my first raid. And if it fails, then I still have 10 beers to drink. So maybe that'll be the next two hours of my stream. Did I, just, I put it in chat? Oh, yep, I'm raiding. Woo! Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Noel, you are now an official technical advisor as well. <laughs> That's incredible. He will love it. And if you haven't been too crazy like Swayze, this guy's insane. So uh, tell him to do 98.1 The Swayze. Uh, what else does he do? Game shows, all sorts of cool shit. So um, later, later. <laughs> Sean Diedrich coming in with a raiding party nineteen <laughs> Raiders <laughs> Cigar Star <laughs> Oh yeah, this is good shit. So All right, much. guys.